So hello everyone. I'm sure many of you know me, but in case you don't, my name is Stéphane Leblanc. I, I worked in aerospace for a long time as a senior executive, and three years ago, I was inspired to create a center to elevate consciousness in business and organizations and create spaces for leaders to transform. And today, it's a great pleasure to, to, for me to welcome a, a longtime friend and longtime colleague, uh, Bassam and I. You know, sometimes we refer to our career and it's, it feels like we've been in the trenches, you know, of business and, and tough challenges and also joys. And I think I, I met Bassam in 1990 because I started, uh, no, I'm sorry, 1992. 92, yeah. Yeah, because I started at Bombardier in 1991 and Bassam came uh, shortly after. And um, we grew in the company um, together. And at one point it was my boss. At one point it was my colleague and um, uh, the common team is we both left the corporate world, the traditional corporate world. And I think we both embrace our passions and you'll discover that our passions are quite different, but they're quite similar because we both celebrate beauty and what's good about the world. So thank you, Bassam, for taking your time to come with me. Well, it's a pleasure, Stefan. And yes, you were one of the first few people I met at Bombardier, the first few people I worked with, and, and we did grow together. And that was quite a 23 years for me. So it's uh, Same for me. Kind of incredible Same to look back. Yeah. And so today we're going to talk about embracing uh, our passions. And um, when I met Bassam a few years ago after Bombardier in his new life, part of his new life, because his new life involves many facets. I, I, I said to myself, this is what you're born to do. And we're going to talk about that because it involves photography. But before we go there, you know, today we're going to talk about Bassam, his, uh, his journey, you know, in the corporate world, uh, a bit of his life story as well, you know, because sometimes we embrace something, we put it away and then we'll come back to it decades later. And I think Bassam is a good example of that, you know. He removed the dust on something that he started when he was young. And um, so today we're going to talk about that in a very humbling, you know, very honest and straightforward way, including the challenges that come with it. So, so maybe, Bassam, we can start by sharing a bit of a, your life story, you know, and it's, it's quite contextual that you, you know, there's so much going on in Lebanon because that's where you come from. Yeah. And, and we can start about that and, and maybe share... Maybe a bit about who you are, where you come from, your career, and 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 maybe start with uh, you know the 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 how can I see the new life you know? Yeah, I guess we can go as far back as you want, but just to kind of not go too much too much into it. I, I am Lebanese. I was born in Lebanon, and I came to Canada when I was fourteen, just around the Olympics back in '76. And uh, essentially, Montreal is my home. I've been here most of my life. I identify home as being Montreal and being Canada and Quebec and Canada. So, uh, so that was kind of for me a long time ago. But uh, uh, that's that's where I come from. That's where I am. And uh, today, uh, I can you know basically today I'm here to share my journey with you. I mean, Stefan and I talked to you about it's, it's about my personal journey, my personal experience, and. Uh, it is going to be about photography and other things. And, and I would like to go back in time where even back in Lebanon, when I was six or seven or eight years old, my father was a school teacher and he was in charge of the dark room in the, with the photography club in the school. It was a private school. And he would always be in the dark room and I'd be the little kid hanging around in the red light and the dark light uh, with my father as he's developing pictures. So that has kind of my first exposure to pictures, but that was a history ago. And, and really wasn't really relative in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and uh, really what, uh, maybe I'll start where I am today and go backwards. Today, I'm basically uh, retired from Bombardier. You know, Stefania mentioned the word Bombardier, so I'm assuming we can talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I am basically retired from Bombardier, but not definitely not retired from, from, from many other things. And uh, there's really three aspects to my life today. Uh, I... I do own a, a portrait photography business that offers modern, elegant photo shoot experiences. I also have a consulting business where I help small and medium-sized companies to get structured for success. And then there's the third part of my life, which I call the, you know, the semi-retired part, where I simply enjoy the freedom of being able to do things outside of those two businesses, right? And uh, going back, my career started about 30-something years ago uh, in multiple industries. Uh, but really, the last 23 years of my career were spent in, the, in aerospace with the same company. 
and I had an opportunity to work, um, you know, in many areas of the business uh, and, and, and in the organization. But the, ma the majority of my time, you know, 22 out of the 23 years were actually in management. Even though I'm an engineer by training, I've never actually worked as an engineer as such. Uh, it was always in management. And the last 10 years were spent as a vice president, uh, general manager, really managing big parts of the business, big organization, aircraft assembly plants, and uh, multi-billion dollar aircraft development programs. So uh, that was really uh, my, uh, my, my career. I was very fortunate to spend it in the aerospace industry. Uh, I think it's an extremely stressful and demanding industry, yet extremely re rewarding. As you know, Stefan, and some of the people on the call know, it's rewarding in many ways. It's an environment where it's filled with passion, it's filled with innovation. Uh, it's like it's dedication, hard work, and and when and, and amazing things happen when people collaborate, uh, teamwork, and and uh, rigor and discipline. And it's not only within the company you work for, because we always work with an extended uh, network of customers, suppliers, and, and collaborators around the world. So that's where I grew up. That's where I grew uh, personally and and professionally, and, and obviously a big part of my life. So I had a great job. I enjoyed it very much, and. Uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of things come to an end, and the last uh, last few years uh, were extremely tough. It is tough for me and many people, and uh, I started enjoying it less and less. And for many reasons that maybe are not necessarily relevant to the to the conversation today, other than the fact that whatever joy and pleasure I got out of working uh, in that job and, and those uh, in that environment um, was wasn't there anymore. And I felt like I was in, a, in an environment that no longer fit my personal and my professional values. So when I was given an opportunity, in, in quotation marks, to take early retirement, I really jumped on it. And uh, I jumped on it for, for multiple reasons, but one of them was the fact that I had discovered photography about three years or three or four years before that. That was in 2015, by the way, when I left. So about exactly five years ago. And uh, and that's where kind of my the next phase of my life started, and I'll, I'll talk more about that. So, uh, the, the, uh, so that's basically kind of a quick summary of what I, where I am today and a bit of history. So, thank you, Basam, and, and uh, I really echo what you said. Uh, it was very, very tough, the environment we worked in, because of the, you know, what's at stake, you know, building 50 to $70 million planes for the richest people in the world. But we also had a lot of fun because it was, for an engineer, maybe for a man, it's the most beautiful thing you can build. <laughs> and I want to bring the concept of beauty because uh, we'll get into that because um, when you're a photographer, you yeah. see life differently than anyone else. Yeah. So how did that start photography? You know what? You talked about your dad, but that's probably not where your biggest influence came. So maybe talk about when photography came in your life and when it came back in your life you know, recently. Yeah, so... Uh the only significant thing early in my life was right around high school, I took, or maybe in CJEP, I took a course in photography. That was my first real you know, experience with photography. And I set up a, a, a dark room in my apartment, in my bathroom, basically. I put up a red light and have some equipment, and I would develop black and white pictures. And I did that for about a year and actually never did anything with that for the next 30-something you know, years. You know, the career gets in the way. You start, your, you, know, you, start, you start working and family and such. And to be honest, for the 30 or so years uh, until I left Bombardier, I, I actually had absolutely no hobbies, no special interests other than family and work. So you can imagine just, you know, uh, I don't want to call it dull and boring. I just want to say that there was never really anything other than those two in my life. Uh, and what happened was in uh, around Christmas 2012, one of our colleagues, uh, was on the, I was just basically texting back and forth with one of our colleagues uh, on vacation while we were on, on holiday. And uh, he, he was a, an amateur photographer and he had a, set up a website with some of his pictures. So I was looking at it and talking back and forth. He convinced me, or at least I convinced myself to go out and buy a camera. So I bought a camera, uh, whatever it was at the time, and I started taking pictures, uh, mainly landscapes. And I happened to travel a lot for my work at the time. And I was often in Europe and other parts of the world. And I would take the camera along and get up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, and go take pictures, you know, at sunrise before getting back, you know, getting ready for work. And I'd do the same thing in the evenings or, or, uh, or stay for the weekends, depending where I am. So that's how it all started in terms of the interest in photography. 
And uh, you know, you, you learn, you, you play, and I'm very, I'm very curious about things. So obviously, a lot of YouTube videos and how to do things, and so all that was happening until uh, a good friend of mine, who's an artist, uh, gave me a call once, and she said, uh, "I need a favor from you." And I said, "What?" She said, "Well, I have a friend. I'd like to offer her a photo shoot. I hired a photographer, but we'd like to do the photo shoot in a business aircraft in a private jet." Right. So can you can you help me? And, and I said, well, let me look into it. I think I know some people. I just happened to be in charge of the plant where we build those things. So, uh, yes, I took advantage of my position. My apologies for those involved. But at the end of the day, we ended up spending a few hours on a plane taking photos. And there I was, you know, totally uninvolved in the, in the, in the, in the photo shoot itself. But I was ended up helping the photographer that I met that day. Uh, assisting him and I'm like a kid in a candy store and uh, within a week of that uh, him and I you know he and I discussed you know started talking back and forth he had a studio with downtown Montreal and I made the decision out of nowhere uh, to rent his studios uh, to his studio for a year uh, rent it be able to use it whenever I want uh, by paying him a certain amount of money it was four hundred dollars a month and uh, Went out and I bought equipment. I bought lighting equipment. I was lucky enough that you know I, I can I can afford to buy some things, and uh, I started doing photo shoots. I went on Facebook, started looking for for models and makeup artists and stylists, and started collaborating with people. And make a long story short, in the next two years, I, two to three years, I did about 140, 150 photo shoots in that studio. So gave me the opportunity to learn a lot about photography as such, the technical part of it, about you know creative part of it and so on. So that's how I really got into photography. And that was in parallel with working at, uh, at Bombardier. So I would do, I would shoot every weekend and once in a while in the evening, but mainly every weekend. Mm. And uh, so that's how it started and <clears throat> helped me build a portfolio. Uh, and uh, the, the interesting part is that, you know, I talked about earlier about how, how my job, which was, a job of a lifetime that people dreamed of having, I wasn't happy anymore. I wasn't getting any pleasure out of it. And the funny part is that I use this, this, this comparison. I say I had more pleasure sweeping the, the studio floor, cleaning the studio floor than the job that actually defined my career. It's a bit harsh to say, but it kind of gives you an example of, of how sometimes we, uh, you know, joy, we, we find pleasure in things that we never thought we would find pleasure. Uh, so that's that's how I kind of transitioned into photography, and then it went on to become a business, which you know we can we can discuss uh, as we can uh, as we can go along. It's very clear to me, Basam, that there was something inside you that was ignited that you just pursued. You know, you go from you know a tiny bit of photography to renting a studio, doing all that stuff. And and when I went when I called you uh, three years ago at my first conference to take pictures of my uh, my speakers, you know, we went to your studio. Yeah. I, I saw you for the first time in a completely different light, you know, and, and you and I were, you know, we're, we're fighters at work, you know, we work hard, we push the machine. And when I saw you in your studio, I saw the artist, you know, I saw the guy that what came out to me very loudly is that you made people really comfortable so the beauty could come out of them. Even my picture that I have from three years ago, I've been told I should change it because it's old, but it's the best picture I ever had of myself. <laughs> so I'm attached to it. So can we talk a bit about that? Because it's clearly more than a passion. I mean, I don't know if it's a calling, but it's something that was deep inside you that was just, and, and you know, for an engineer like me, mechanical engineer, you know, mostly in our heads, yeah. I think what you do now when you do photography, especially now with the pregnant women, I mean, it's so beautiful. It's really, you know, celebrating beauty, love. So can we talk a bit about that? And how does that bring you joy compared to your work, you know? Yeah, well, it, it's, uh, it's true that it went very fast, very quickly from a curiosity, you know, that to a hobby and into a passion. And it did push me in a, into a world I really didn't know much about. Uh, it, it brought a creative part that I didn't even know existed, you know, especially, as I said, 30 years of working in a hard, you know, very tough industry. And, and senior management, uh, it, it's, it, you know, with no other uh, hobbies outside of work. So it's, it's, uh, it, it, it did push me in something I wasn't really familiar with. Uh, and, and, and actually, it was tough when I left work, even though I was uh, jumped on it and I was happy because I, and I didn't leave for photography. I left because, you know, obviously I, I, I had a choice to leave or not and I made the decision to leave. But 
I, I, photography kind of just told me that there's something else out there, right? And, and fast forward, you know, I kind of designed my, my life today in a way that I'm happy with. Uh, but I wanted to, it was tough because, you know, you identify with, with, with what you do usually, right? It's 30 years in industry, you kind of put a stamp, you put a label on yourself, you say, that's what I do. I'm, a, I'm an engineer, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a coach, I'm a technician, I'm a vice president, you name it, whatever it is, you put a label on yourself. And I, I went through a long period of re reflection. Uh, to say, uh, you know, this transition, can I really identify with being a photographer? And I couldn't do that, right? And, and I had multiple conversations and, and talks with, with people, and I came to understand that, you know, as human beings, we're always seeking that feeling of satisfaction and joy, right? And until we find it, you know, or if we don't have it, we feel out of balance. We feel like there's something missing, in, no matter what we're doing, right? And I also realized that, you know, through this, this period, and this is not in one day, this is through a, a, a couple of years worth of back and forth, our brain doesn't really care where we get that joy, right? So you either have that joy or you don't. You have that feeling or you don't. So whether you get it as being vice president or whether you get it as a, as a photographer, the brain doesn't know that, right? It just knows that it's there. So, uh, so what counts is really how you feel, how things make you feel. And, and, and I realized that what really gave me joy at work, even though we had a tough job and we had to deliver and perform and have month ends and quarter ends and, and so on, it wasn't that part that gave me joy. As much as I had to do it and I did it and I did it relatively well from what I, people say, that, that's not where I got my joy. I got my joy at the end of the day when I felt that there was, that I had a positive impact on people whether it's colleagues, whether it's, it's, it's employees, whether it's even you know, anybody around me. And, and it, made, it, made, it felt good when I made a difference in someone's life, whether it's small or big, right? And, and I was a, I call it open door type of person. People would walk in. I had many people that came in regularly just to discuss the, the, that I mentored, that I coached, that I had any discussion. So I, that's where I enjoyed. I enjoyed working with teams, putting teams together and, and getting people around the table. And I came to realize that, that, that photography gave me the same feeling. It gave me that feeling of being able to contribute positively. Uh, because the type of photography I do, I do now, and, and that, that, that really got me interested into doing what I do now, is, is, uh, is portraiture. And it's really, you said it, having people see themselves like they've never seen themselves before. Having people see themselves in a different light. And more importantly, having people see themselves how others see them. Uh, so that's the parallel between, you know, it, 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 it's important to remember that you, 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 you got to step outside of the labels of what you do versus what actually makes you feel good. And once you realize that, you find out that there's multiple things in the world that can actually have that, that can give you that feeling. And it's a matter of a, of a, of a, of a, of a connection with something. And if you happen to connect with what you're doing at work today, that's great. I mean, I did for many, 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 many years. Right. Uh, but we all know that a lot of us don't, you know, we do, we, we, you know, we have our careers, we have no choice, we have families, we have to, to make money and, and live. But at the end of the day, we may get to a certain phase in our life where we do have choices and we can make our choice and we can design it in a way, uh, you know, that, that fits, that fits what gives us pleasure and, and, and most, most importantly, less stress. Mm. Yeah. You know, in, in my work, Bassam, you know what I do, and, and we, we discover that in psychology, we spend the first 40 years of our lives feeding our ego needs, you know, so we got that, you and I, the money, the car, and all the stuff, and eventually we shift to... Oh, so you're, assumed, you're assuming there, but that's okay. I'm just, I know, I'm just saying, we, we yeah. got, you know, with the jobs we did, we got financial rewards, we got yeah. Thatcher yeah. and stuff like that. When I see you now, uh, you're really in service of other people. You know, and so can we talk about, because your photography has evolved, you know, you used to get up at 4 a.m. to go take uh, sunrise and stuff. And, and now you're, you're really, I mean, in the portraiture, you're really celebrating people and you have a certain type of photography you do now. Kids cook. Can we talk a bit about your typical client and what you focus on now? Yeah. And then we can talk about how that's evolving as a business because you also transform yourself in the way you look at photography. And when I heard your podcast the other day, I was quite impressed about, you know, your shift. So, but first maybe talk about the type of photography you do, your clients and what you do for them. 
Yeah, so, so maybe I preface that by saying that in general, people don't take time to appreciate themselves, right? We're all busy, we're lost in everyday life. You know, we, we forget ourselves while we're busy taking care of other people. So that's fundamentally, you know, and who's my target client? It's, it's everybody who's looking to kind of pay some attention to themselves and treat themselves, right? So that's number one, right? So a portrait session to me is, is empowering in many ways. It empowers the mind, the soul, the body. It's an experience that builds self-esteem for those that, that kind of need a pickup, that have gone through some tough times, that need to rediscover themselves, that need to kind of uh, uh, feel good about themselves and who they are and, and maybe see themselves in a different light. And it's also a good way to capture kind of life moments, important phases in their life. So, so I target my clients are, are customers who value that experience of taking care of myself for a change and offering myself a gift for myself and nobody else. So that's really what I look for. It's not about, you know, where am I going to sell my pictures, where am I going to publish them and so on and so forth. It's more about the one-on-one -on -one connection with a person and bringing out the best in that person through a photo shoot, right? So, uh, you know, there's a big gap, how we see ourselves versus how people see us. There's a big gap there. And, and I learned that through my, my photography, through my camera, I can, you know, somehow bridge that gap and, and positively contribute to how people see themselves. I get pleasure out of that. And you know, when I said I, I, I always had joy in having an impact on somebody and, and I find it's a, it's a great win-win when we do that. So that's kind of uh, uh, my, my target. My, you know, I, I, I do multiple types of portraits, but my two main, main areas are uh, maternity and, 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 you know, basically uh, I call it regular portraits, which, but, but it's not just portraits, it's a, it's a portrait experience where you're, you're actually being treated for a day in a photo shoot experience like you've never had. You're, you're treated as a, as, as, a, as, as the star of the day and, and pampered all day and you come up with an experience that you, you, you know, you'll never forget. But also you have, a, you have a, a photos to document it and cherish for a long time. The other part is personal branding, which is another area of, 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 uh, uh, of importance. And that's people looking to tell a story people looking to enhance their brand. A lot of us and many people on the, on, the, on the call today are independent entrepreneurs that are building their websites, they're building their brand, they wanna do different things, they wanna get clients and they wanna tell their story and, and put it out there and reinforce their brand through a series of images. So I do a lot of personal branding where it's not just headshots you know, for LinkedIn, but more of a you know, 15, 20, 25 series of photos that tell that story and that they can use. So again, with the same goal at the end, you're bringing out the essence of the person or the the, uh, the brand that they're trying to to uh, portray. Mm. So, mm. so I just want to share. I said it before a bit, but you know, when I did my experience with you, you know, uh, it, it's quite uncomfortable to be photographed because we're not used to sh you know to shine and stuff. It's usually pictures of Dis Disney's and stuff like that with low quality camera, and and. When I looked at your work, I mean, you keep bent like this, and and in the end, the picture looks amazing. So there was a lot of artistry, you know, with the light and all this stuff. Yeah. So, and I, 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 I mean, I could say I had a beautiful experience, and the people that I brought you, the men and women, they also had a beautiful experience. You know, for them, it was the best picture they ever had. So, um, you also, Basam, uh, you know, as you said, you you have three parts. You know, a part where you can do what what you feel like. You have photography, but you also are, are still involved in business. And yeah. you have a consulting business yeah. that you started to use all your wealth and knowledge, obviously, because you've been in battle, you've done so much. Can you take, talk a bit about that part of your life and yeah. the kind of work you do and what kind of clients you work with and stuff like that? Sure. So when I left Bombardier, as I said, I, I, I didn't leave it for photography. So I, when I left, I, I decided that I'm going to be doing those two things. I'm going to be doing photography in whatever form and format at the time. I wasn't sure how. And I also want to share what I've learned through all these years and, and do consulting uh, also. So I was, like, I was fortunate enough to do so many things and go through many experiences uh, at Bombardier. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I, I, I started a business uh, in, in consulting. I got a few mandates to start and, I, and slowly, I, you know, I thought I would just kind of consult in the aerospace industry. And again, through that moment, you know, the time of reflection, I started to realize that where I could add most value is really with small, 
small and medium sized companies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so my focus today is on small and, and medium sized companies and mainly small. Uh, and whether they're performing well or not, they typically, I find that they typically hit what I call the growth wall, right? They grow to a certain level and all of a sudden they hit that wall where, where all the things that they've done so far uh, don't, don't work anymore or they, they don't allow them to go to the next level. And inevitably, inevitably, the reason for that is because they don't have the fundamentals in place that allow them to grow further. Mm -hmm. So that jump between a small company and a large company calls for a different level of sophistication and maturity in multiple aspects of the business, whether it's in leadership talent, whether it's operational processes, performance management, uh, you name it. So, so what I do is, is, uh, is my, most of my work is with the senior leadership team of a company, whether it's the president or the owner or the CEO and the four or five, six, seven people that report to them. I work with companies anywhere between you know, 5 million, 10 million of sales up to 300, 400 million of sales. So I work with them to get them structured as a leadership team to help them implement any missing fundamentals, basically, uh, you know, uh, and, and some you know, fundamentals and business practices. Uh, you know, big companies like Bombardier's, we, we, you know, we, ha we had, you know, many processes in place. You can't run a huge organization without having uh, fundamentals in place where 80% where of things run on their own and then you're managing the other 20%. And it's usually the reverse in small companies. And that's why when they start growing too fast or when they get to a certain point, it's hard for them to switch. So that's, that's, uh, that's what I do. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, um, usually you know, diagnosing their, their uh, doing a diagnostic for the business, coming up with recommendations and then helping them implement them. And I do some mentoring and coaching, coaching also for the leadership leaders and the leadership team within those organizations. Beautiful, thank you. And um, uh, how do you balance uh, photography and consulting? You know, time is probably our biggest uh, asset, you know, so the, the thing that we never get back. How do you manage yeah. all that? How do you choose where you spend your time? Well, it, it's, it's actually, the beauty of it is that those two things uh, are both, um, like they allow me to be in control of my time, right? In, in control of the work I do at any given time. Right? I have the luxury of refusing work uh, or at least delaying work and scheduling it in a way that spread it more effectively, basically. Schedule it in a way that, that fits what I'm doing. So if I'm busy with one, I can either slow down the other or, or do, it, you know, do it in parallel if possible. The type of consulting I do uh, is not full-time consulting. So when I have a mandate, it's not usually four or five months of full-time work. It's usually anywhere between half a day and three days a week. And if I have a couple of mandates at the same time, it's, it's never been more than two to three days a week. And I designed it that way. And that's how I like it. You know, it's, it's, it's been less many times, which, which happens to all of us. Uh, so that leaves time to do photo shoots during the week, right? So that's, uh, that's how I manage them. Uh, uh, and I also find that they actually are complementary in a way. And I know it's difficult to, to, to see that, you know, they're 180 degrees opposite from each other in terms of work but at the end of the day it's dealing with people to, to, to help them be at their best to help them see themselves differently and, and, and behave in a way that makes them more either happy successful or, or whatever and it's you know more 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 objectively i think my experience in business my experience help in business helps me with my photography in terms of setting up my business in terms of, of, of fundamental things that you do when you're in business that maybe I don't have to worry as much anymore and it allows me to focus on things that I'm not very good at or I don't have much experience in, whether it's sales or marketing mm -hmm. or, 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 uh, or other ways. The other way that it helps me is, uh, you know, the complementary thing between them is that, as I said, I do a lot of personal branding and, and, and having the business background and having set up my own, my own, you know, my own businesses helps me as I deal with entrepreneurs and people that are looking just for a simple photo shoot for personal branding, I end up inevitably helping them in their business, uh, whether through conversation, whether, you know, whether through, through specific uh, work we do together to help them get their business going or, or, or so on. And uh, I got to a point where recently uh, during this pandemic, during this COVID-19, 
uh, situation. I've been working on, uh, 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 started working with independent self-employed professionals, uh, kind of putting on a sort putting together a service where I can help them structure their business more effectively and make sure that they have all these fundamentals that we talk about in place as early as possible, as soon as possible in their business so that they can focus on growing it. So it, it kind of all fits together and I manage it. Listen, I don't, uh, as I said, I, I am semi-retired in a way, but that's the aspect of my, of my work and I, and I play with them depending on the situation. I've been in a situation where I gave up photography for a few months because I was busy working on a, on a mandate and, and it's been the other way around also uh, multiple times. I was telling a friend who was a bit older than you, uh, who was had a successful career like you did, because you know you had a very successful career. You did like really big things, managing plans, launching new programs, multi-billion-dollar program, and now you have to choose. You could choose, and you choose to contribute. You choose to have fun. You choose. You're not a golfer anyway, so you're not going to play golf every day. Um, and I, and I think uh, it it it. Uh, what can I say? It, it, you can see when you, we look at you that this brings a lot of joy and you also bring a lot of joy to other people. And personally, I, I think it's going to make you healthy for a long time. Can we share, Basam? Someone might be listening here and saying, okay, I would love to follow a similar path. You know, it may not be photography. Yeah. What do you advise them to do? You know, because sometimes there's a like you said, for a while, okay, it's, it doesn't fulfill me, but we keep going to work, you know? Yeah. And eventually you just follow the passion, bought a camera and started doing, and then poof, you have a business out of it. So what do you advise people to do? You know, what would be the first step? And, you know, how can they listen to what makes them? You know, what, what yeah. Them? yeah, sure. So listen, I am not a, I, I don't want to be a, pretend an expert to be an expert on this, on this, uh, on this aspect of it, but I, I do have my experience and I can share my experience and my, my advice based on my experience. And I realize that not everybody can design the next phase of their life. I think, like, like, you, know, we, you know, sometimes we have no choice to do things and, and, or at least we don't recognize that we have a choice, but there are a lot of people that are in my situation. You know, you get to a certain age, you have a career behind you, you're looking for something different. You actually have something, you have a passion, and you just, you know, what do I do next, right? So, so, so for anybody in that situation, you know, hopefully, hopefully my, my, uh, my story can help. Uh, and so, so sticking to the subject of today, which is following your passion, or, or uh, I want to make sure that we, the assumption here that somebody has a passion, right? So if somebody is interested in doing something, and then how do I go about fitting it into the life, and how, how do I go about structuring it? So there's kind of some fundamentals that you need to go through in terms of thought process. Is number one, whatever your passion is, right? Is it something through which you can offer value to other people, right? And again, I'm assuming here that, that you know you want to incorporate it into your lifestyle. You also want to make some money out of it, right? Whether it's big money, small money, doesn't really matter. It's not just for the joy of having a hobby, right? So is there value? Is there a way I can offer value to others? Is there is there you know a problem that other people have that I can help being passionate about the subject, whether it's a service, a product, information, you name it, right? So that's number one. Uh, and, and extremely important, you have to be credible. So do you actually master or at least, you know, are, are very good at doing whatever it is you're passionate about, right? Because I'm assuming nobody wants to deal with a, with a novice, with somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about. So you have to face reality and say, where am I in level, in level of maturity and, and who are the people that I can help? It doesn't mean that if you don't have experience and you're not you know, the best at something, it doesn't mean you can't help people because it's a scale, right? It's a scale. And if you're in the middle of the scale, you can always help the people that are below you in terms of maturity and, and knowledge. So you really have to be honest to where you are and who you can help, right? And, and then I think the most important thing is being curious about what it is and, and about that business and that industry, right? Um, you know, how does it work? You know, how do people make money? How does it happen? How do people deliver that service or, you know, whether it's photography or coaching or, or, or whatever, and learn as much as possible to see what your options are. It may open up doors that you never thought of, right? But I think the most important thing, and it's a lesson I learned, it's, it's very simple, but it's I learned it way back in MBA, my, one of my courses in MBA, I think it was an entrepreneur courses. I, my professor said, uh, 
if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur, find out what it takes to be successful in that business and just do it. Right? And a lot of us don't find out what it takes to be successful. Or we find out what it takes to be successful, but then we skimp and we say, well, we can't afford that. Or, you know, well, that's not for me and I'm going to do it a bit differently. And inevitably, it doesn't mean you can't do it differently. But you need to know what does it take to be successful in that so that you can make it your own and not skimp on the fundamentals. Right? I mean, there's fundamentals in the restaurant business that you have to follow. Well, if you don't know about them, you may not be successful. Right? So you have to be comfortable in doing what it takes to be successful. And that's important when you're trying to design your life and you want to, you know, you want to, you know, it's about joy and fulfillment. You don't want to see, well, okay, it takes this and this and this to be successful in this business, but it's not going to give me joy. Well, you have to kind of balance that and say, am I willing to do those things? Or is it going to be, am I going to be miserable? So that's the part of being honest with yourself and, and being curious about what it takes. So that's, that's a part of it. That's number one. Uh, I think there's a math, mathematical, a simple math aspect to it, like a, an objective way of looking at designing, you know, in the next phase. And uh, I'll give you an example with what I did. So uh, I said I want to do photography and I want to do and I want to do consulting. So there's many different types of photography. So I have to start by saying, okay, what kind of lifestyle do I have? You got to work backwards from the life you want to live. Do I want to work full time? Do I want to work part time? Do I want to work weekends? Do I want to have flexibility in my schedule? All right? Uh, do I want to travel six months of the year and only work six months of the, of the year? So you have to kind of be clear about what the lifestyle you want to live. You have to come up with a number that you're willing to say, hey, listen, and I'll give an example. Let's say you want to say, I want to make $40,000 in my pocket from photography in, this, in, in a year, as an example, just a round number. Okay, well, what is it going to take to do that? So that's in my pocket. That means there's, you know, business expenses. There's the cost of doing business. There's taxes I have to pay in that business. So let's say I have to bring in $70,000 to be able to put $40,000 in my pocket, right? There's a number. There's a simple math. Okay, how do I get there? I can do photo shoots for simple headshots that I can charge $500 for, or I can do photo shoot experiences that I charge $2,500 for or $3,000, you know, whatever number. And I have a choice. So, okay, to make $70,000, again, simple math, I would have to do, in the example that I have here, I would have to do 100 and, 140 photo shoots at $500 versus 28 photo shoots at $2,500. So which lifestyle do I want? Do I want to schedule 140 people? Do I want to work every day to get 100, you know, 140 days a year or whatever? So you do the math and say, this is a business, uh, I guess, uh, numbers that actually allow me, you know, allow me to fit within that lifestyle. So that's the kind of the numbers part of it, the simple part. But then there's the subjective part. So once you say, I'd rather do 28 photo shoots at $2,500 and offer the experience, then you have to say, what does it take to do that? It's not everybody that wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to spend $2,500 on a photo shoot. Right, so what do you have to be, right? So you went, you, you, you said we had an exciting product back there, you know, the business aircraft, luxurious, you know, luxury product. Well, the $2,500 photo shoot is potentially a luxury product for somebody who values pictures, right? So how do you sell luxury product? How do you market them? How do you have to, you know, you have to have a studio? Do you not have a studio? There's a whole bunch of things that come with it that you have to see what does it take to be successful at selling $2,500 photo shoots? What does it take to be successful at coaching people in leadership or whatever you want to do, uh, you know, in, in, your, in, your, in your business? So that's what I mean by designing your life. You have to work backwards from what makes you happy. You have that luxury of designing it and do it properly. Work backwards with the numbers and then say, okay, now that I can do it on paper, does it, will it still make me happy? Let me get my feet wet. Let me do the right things to get there. And it's all about the research, 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 and learning from people who do it. I, I personally, uh, I'm a YouTube freak. I learned a lot through YouTube. I, I'm, on, I'm on all kinds of seminars and webinars and things to learn about, whether it's the consulting part or the photography part. And you look at people who have done it, and you learn bits and pieces, and you apply them to yourself. And uh, I call it the art, the, the, the art of uh, figuring things out, you know. Uh, 
You can always pay money for others to help you if you, if you want to do that, that's great. But learn from people who, who have done it and, and, and be curious about everything. So that's, that's what I mean by designing it and, and uh, uh, doing things in a way that satisfies both the business part of it and also that, that intangible, you know, uh, uh, being happy doing it. Thank you for that, Bassam. And, uh, you know, I, I like to say that we should pursue what is my poetic side, what makes our hearts sing. You know, we get up in the morning, we can't wait to do it. You know, and, and then when you talk about sweeping the floor, it's not the same as when you take pictures, but it's like someone who likes to garden or they, they don't mind taking out the weeds. You know, they, they, they would love to take out the weeds in their garden. And, and, and knowing you uh, and the, your story, when you start into that, when you latched onto that, I mean, you can stop. You watch videos, and then at some point, you embrace the business side. I remember you talked about a lady that you met that offered a special course, and I completely transformed. But you, you were just, you couldn't stop taking the knowledge and the wisdom and apply it. So, and, and I think maybe you'll agree. Once, once it brings us so much joy, we'll do the effort. You know, we'll get up at 4 a.m. to go, go take pictures wherever you went to when you were doing all that stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, we all, we all, we all uh, uh, know that, right? When you value something, when you like some, something, it, it, you create the time for it, right? You find the time. We're all the same. So, uh, you know, you're right. But, but you did touch on the business part of it, and I want to go back a little bit. And, and when, I, when I decided that, you know, I, I don't want to be a $300 photographer, $500 photographer, just, you know, in and out and come in for your 10 minute photo shoot and leave with two pictures. I had to learn what it takes to be a luxury, you know, modern, elegant type photo shoot experience. What does it take to do that? So I, I found a business model. I found a, a, a online, one of a, my favorite photographers and, and she's an educator also, and she has a community and, and I learned the business model and I found out the fundamentals and I put them in place and I applied them to everything I do, whether it's marketing, whether it's a website, whether it's how I sell my services. So you got to do the homework that allows you to do that. You can't say, I want to work 20 days a week, a year only, and end up charging $300 a day. It just doesn't work. Yeah, you'll probably be happy doing that, but if you also want to make some money, it won't work. So you really have to invest the time in doing things, uh, not perfectly, but properly, right? A level of maturity that, that, that you can justify what people are paying you to do. At the end of the day, people need to leave with equal value or better value than, than you know, an equal exchange of value. Mm. Whether they pay you money and you give them an experience, whether you, they pay you money, you coach them, whether they pay you money and you give them pictures or sell them mugs and t-shirts, whatever it is. Right? Yeah, I mean, what you say, it's really about the experience. There's a lot of people in town that would take much cheaper picture, but they wouldn't get the experience. So that's why we... I think most of us, that's what we crave in our life experiences. That's why we go to restaurants, you know, we yeah. pay much yeah. more. Than, and that's what you offered. And, and I appreciate, you know, when I listen to the podcast, the shift you made. And maybe you can talk, maybe one last question before the Q&A is how did you embrace your own value? You know, to go from a 300 to, you had to, you, you had to work on yourself. You know, am I, am I, am I worth that? You know? Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's probably the, the the toughest part because uh, you, you you know you say who am I to charge so much for my photography right? and and it's it's kind of a we talk about it I was just talking to my wife about it today the, the imposter syndrome whatever we do we kind of have that imposter for who am I to do this who am I to coach who am I to at the end of the day you are who you are you have valuable information that people and once you believe that and that's the toughest part is to actually believe that what you offer is value to others mm -hmm. right and that can only be it can only be confirmed and validated by actually putting yourself out there and offering it, right? I did a hundred and something shoots for free to build a portfolio to actually learn, right? I'm coaching people today and, you know, I talked about my, my, uh, my, my service that I'm putting together for independent uh, uh, professionals, say self-employed independent professionals. I'm, I'm doing it with three or four people to practice, to see if there's value there, to package it, right? But so, so you have to actually put yourself out there and prove to yourself and, and get feedback from others that there is value. And just, you know, some people will struggle with it, some people won't. So that's important. And the other thing is you have to look around you. Uh, you know, one thing I really learned is that we tend to project on other people what we believe. So if I believe I would never pay more than, you know, 200 bucks for a photo shoot, 
it's, it would be very hard for me to believe that people would spend 2,500. You have to get over that because the world is full of all kinds of people. People pay money for what they value. If you like trucks, you will buy a $150,000 truck. If you don't like trucks, you never even think about spending money on it, right? You can buy a purse at Walmart for 20 bucks and you can buy a purse from Louis Vuitton at $3,000, right? It's not, it's, the difference is not $3,000 in, in, in the purse itself. It's in what you value, right? So once you figure that out, you have to kind of shed those, those doubts about, you know, Will anybody spend $2,500? When I started spending, sorry, charging that much money for my photo shoots, I, I put a business model in place. My first seven photo shoots averaged $2,100, right? Just one day to the next, just by applying the principles that I learned from this uh, business model and, and working with real people that got the, got the value that they want out of it and, and, and it works, all right? So it's not an easy thing, but you have to put yourself out there and experiment and keep offering, serving people, offering value. It's, it's, it's the most important thing is that people value your service because they received, they felt good getting it. They received it well, and they cherish the memory of working with you. And that's, that's everything I try to do. It doesn't work all the time, but everything I try to do is really to have people leave with a good experience behind them. Beautiful. That's, that's sorry, I'm getting a bit. Uh, you and, and it's, uh, I go through the same as a coach, you know. Uh, Tony Robbins charges a million dollars a year to coach people, you know, so it goes from $50 an hour to a million. So thank you, Bassam. There's seven minutes left, so I would love to ask people to uh, chime in, ask a question, share a comment. Uh, when you're ready, just unmute yourself. But it would be fun if you focus your comments on obviously what Bassam has shared. And you can tell them how great a boss he was at Bombardier. That's okay. Too. <laughs> Please don't. Hey, I just want to say hello to Alessandra, who I noticed right now she's on the line. Hi, Alessandra from Italy. So we're really international today. Yeah. So anyone that wants to ask. Hello, a hello Bassam. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, Bassam, and uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, since, since I joined, may I share a little comment I have? Uh, first of all, Basam, thank you for thank you for sharing your experience. Being so inspiring and uplifting, I think it can help as an example to all of us trying to change our life at a certain point, especially in this hard time. Because you know, COVID is changing the world, and it's also giving opportunities to to change and make, making our dreams come true. Maybe. Um, while you were talking about your past experience in Bombardier, it came to my mind something I've been so much um, touched when colleagues of yours and you told me some time ago. That was a letter that every Monday you sent to uh, all your team. And the title was something like, what's, what's on my mind, right? And I remember people were so inspired by your work and it was so much driven with passion and we got to do this this week. It's got to, you know, we got to get the target. And, and at that point of my career, I really wanted, I wish I had a manager that was encouraging in a way that would make me feel I was part of a team. And I see that you were able to do that in a team that time but you are now somehow delivering that kind of message into an experience, which is a different experience because it transformed into photography, but you were able to transform your passion. And this is a big, big lesson, I think, because um, I, it might be easier to use passion when you are working with a team because you get inputs from other people. But when you are all alone and you have to take your own decision, you have to build your own path. Well, you, you might feel lonely, you know? And it's harder. But if you're able to uh, learn what you have, I mean, if you're able to um, uh, use what you've learned in the past, it really makes uh, a, bit, a big difference. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks, Alessandra, for the kind words. You, you know, it, it, it's about channeling what you've learned in a way, assuming you want to you wanna put yourself out there and, and contribute to other people's development in any way or satisfaction, 
you just have to be authentic about it and, and, and do it. But every, everybody on the screen right now has amazing experiences behind them, right? And it's, 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 you got to start thinking, how can I use it to help others, right? And it comes back to you because I feel when I help somebody, it, it, I mean, just the satisfaction I get. So it, 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 it is, is worth it. So how do you channel it all in a way that you're authentic, you're credible, and, and you're, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're getting, you're getting, you know, the, the value out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for this webinar. It's been, it's been very uplifting. All right. Thanks. Thank you and for I think, I think Angel has his hand up. Go ahead. Yeah. We can't hear you. Yep, sorry. Uh, thanks so much for noting uh, and uh, organizing. It's been very inspiring. Uh, uh, but Sam, uh, how do you? How does that human caring with genuity, in, uh, with genuity, uh, has played in your uh, in your role and in your path building your new uh, your new passion? It, the the. Uh, it, you were always that person that was a. Uh, Caring in a genuine way, yeah. the human side, and and you could see the leader, yeah, working hard, and uh, and the milestones, bang. But there was always this human side, and we can see it more in a colloquial way. We're all but that's, <laughs> in our but places. That's, but this is but this comes back around understanding understanding yourself and understanding what gives what makes you happy, because it, what made me happy is when I was actually in that mode. And again, thank you for the feedback. I'm not trying to say it's it's a it's, it, when I'm in that mode is where I'm happy, right? And I'm lucky enough to have found photography, and I could say the same thing about consulting, but to me, consulting is more Cartesian. It's more something, you know, related to what I've done for 30 years. Photography is a takeoff from there. It's 180 degrees opposite. But it's that connection with people, right? And, and, and people, when you first meet somebody, and I don't know it, I don't know the statistic, but within a few seconds, you either connect or you don't connect with that person. Right. And, and most of us just move on. Right. And, and so, you know, when you say, how have I applied it? It's not a matter of applying it. It's, I think it's who I am and it doesn't mean everybody connects with me, but whoever connects with me, we connect quite well. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I don't want everybody. I mean, it's no big deal if not everybody connects with me. Right. So it's, 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 it's it is what it is. You just have to be aware of what it is that makes you who you are. Right. Thanks yes, so much. Uh, congrats. <laughs> Nabi, I think you put your hand up. Can you yes, unmute well. your can, yeah? Can you unmute? Yeah, hello. Thank you for yeah. for your webinar. Uh, I would like to know when did you know that that you can uh, value yourself? Like how when did you know that you can charge people a hundred or thousand dollars for your photo? What's the, the thing that it, makes it, it you actually, believe it in it? Uh, I, I have to admit, uh, you know, I've been part of this group with uh, the photographer's name is Sue Bryce, uh, Sue Bryce Education. I've been part of her group. She's got like 30 or 40,000 people, photographers around the world that that part of that group. And, uh, and I noticed that a lot of people struggled a lot more than I did in terms of being able to accept the fact that I'm good enough. My, my work is good enough. I think one of the reasons is, is that I had, I had a good portfolio. I had done 150, 200 photo shoots in the past. It's not like I woke up one morning and said, I'm going to start doing a, a photo shoot. And this is about credibility and being skilled, your craft. You're skilled at what you do, right? So I had no problem technically saying that my photography is, my, my quality of my photos is professional level, right? And that's just, but, but it took that business model that I learned from her to say, how do you actually justify it? Because how do you put an experience together to do that, right? Because again, it's, it's if you're gonna charge $200, you need to deliver $200 worth. If you charge 2,500, you need to, to deliver 2,500 worth. It's only fair, equal exchange of value is what I call it, and what she calls it. So, so it, was, it, was, it wasn't about the touchy-feely part. I think I was able to handle that much fast, much better than most people. Uh, I think it was more learning the, you know, fundamentally, I'm an engineer and I'm a business person. So learning the actual fundamentals that says, okay, what's the customer journey? How do you sell them? How do you know, like, how do you know that it's the right customers? Uh, it, it's not everybody, like I said. It's, uh, how do you know it's a Louis Vuitton customer versus a regular purse customer? I don't, you know, 
you have to feel that out in advance. I'm not going to spend three weeks running after somebody who fundamentally is not, is not the target customer who values that experience. So it was more about learning it, learning the business process and being comfortable with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bassam. It's uh, 102, uh, so we're going to have to end. Sorry, Mark, because uh, there's another meeting that's waiting for me to go to now. So, Bassam, I want to thank you very much. Uh, sorry about that, Azra and Mark. I know you wanted to. Okay, well, let me you go. Can message me. By the way, you can message me anytime. So, yeah, so, I'll message you directly. Yeah, please. The, 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 I'm an open book. You can message me, text me, do whatever you'd like. We can give some contacts if you'd like. What I'll do, okay, Bassam, uh, I will share the video of this with all the people that were registered, and I'll share your contact info. Uh, so if they want to ask you a question or if they want to follow up with you to get uh, this experience with you. Yeah. Um, so, Bassam, thank you for sharing uh, your passion. And thank you, everyone, that joined us for uh, this amazing webinar. Thank you for your questions. And uh, as I said, I'll send you guys the video uh, of this if you want to share it. I'll post it also on social media and I'll share it with you Bassam's contacts and Facebook page and all this stuff. Excellent. And in the meantime, in the meantime, just look me up with my name on Facebook and say, Stefan, thank you very much for setting this up. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure and thank you all for joining. Uh, really had a, 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 a fun time uh, with this. So thanks and have a good, a good rest of the day. Many people, Bassam, have said here in thank the you. comments that you're very generous. So I want to echo that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.